sometimes I don't know exactly what I want to say on a topic, but I know that I want to talk about it. And today, that's what this is going to be about. I don't even know what the title of this video is going to be yet, but it really has to do with not isolating ourselves. And I'm finding that even with our children, this is something that is a really big struggle. It leads to so much depression. And I recently read an article about this and it really just stuck out to me. I think because it's something that I'm struggling with within my own home, especially with introducing our children to phones. This is something that I have tried to put my foot down about so many years now with my husband and just that I don't want our kids to have phones. I don't, I, there are just so many other things that they can do and they don't need to have a phone. I didn't have a phone until I had my own job. It was even years after I had a job. It was after I met Jorge, then I actually got a cell phone and, um, you know, I just think that there's so much responsibility that comes with something like that. And we shouldn't be so quick to just put these devices into the hands of our children, um, especially when, as you can see in this world that we're in today with all these smartphones, we ourselves are having such a struggle with them, right? And um, what do we think is going to happen to our kids if we give them the same kind of thing? So I know that many of you have seen the documentary, really talked about how so much of what we see is just within an algorithm telling us what we want to see and trying to capture our attention all the time. And I've talked on my channel in the past a long time ago about why I no longer have an Instagram account. And I think I only made 13 posts on there before I decided that was not for me at all. And it was just one other thing that was trying to take my attention away from the life that I want to have. And it's, you know, it's funny that I have this YouTube channel because normally I wouldn't want to put all of my information out there I wouldn't want to just put my life out there like I don't need to take a picture of my food and to put it on for other people to see but then I can see how some people would just laugh at me because of what I do put out there but I think the um, the reasoning for that is different than say if I were to have my own Instagram account or my uh, or a Facebook account um, which I had had that in the past and I just really had to come to the understanding that it wasn't for me it wasn't what I wanted to do with my time it wasn't how I wanted people to get to know me I didn't want them to get to know me through that it would be more face to face you know real people in my life when we had these kind of interactions that's how I wanted people to get to know me so I came across this article in the Epic Times and um, it was talking about, it says, the title of it is What We Can Do About the Rise of Depression in Kids because this is such a serious thing right now. And you see so many kids on, you know, antidepressants and just all these different things. And can we just stop and take a moment to identify what the majority of this issue is? It's the things that we're putting in the hands of our children and and exposing them to and all the time and energy that they spend on this and so um this is a problem and i'll just outright say it's an issue within our home as well now i've told my kids they're not allowed to have social media they're not allowed to have accounts and you know all this stuff um but even my husband and I disagree on certain things because he wants them to have access to certain things, especially so that um, they can, you know, so that we can tell where they're at, which is fine. And that's one reason I'm, I'm getting a little bit more on board with things with that. But as far as them being tied to a phone, I think that that is the thing that irritates me more than anything. And something that I 
I am sad about, I would say, is that because of what my job is, my kids see me more on like behind a screen than they do my eyes probably because of the time and energy that it takes to create videos and to edit all of that that goes into it answer comments all the things that take our time and attention and so that's something that i am a bit sad about um but I also don't want them to use that as an excuse to be on the phone themselves because what used to be something that we would spend time with other people doing, now more people spend time behind the screen and they spend more time talking to their friend behind the screen than they would just picking up the phone to call them. So in the How to Romanticize Your Life series this month, I talked about let's pick up the phone and call somebody. Instead of texting them, instead of shooting them an email, can we actually hear one another's voice for a minute? Now, I know some people had excuses about why not to do that or you're afraid to you know, interrupt somebody, which there's an easy way to get around that. You just, I guess, send someone a text and ask them, would such and such time be good for you to talk or what time would be good for you? just to talk for a little bit, have a little bit of a conversation. I'm not saying sit on the phone for hours and hours talking to somebody, but just reaching out and, you know, for a quick phone call, hearing the other person's voice really is so nice and so much better than texting and emails. Now, I do understand those that like to really think about what they're going to say before they say it, but still it doesn't take away just the, the feelings that we get from speaking to one another. And the same holds true and you feel that even more when you actually see the person. So even if you could do a FaceTime call, that's even better because then you see one another's facial expressions and then of course to be in one another's company is of the best value. So um, this is one of the reasons why I encourage this. But then going through this article, it's just really sad to, um, to just really understand what it is that makes us feel so lonely and how this is no substitute. Our phones are no substitute for that interaction that we can have with others. And, you know, to have those relationships and the connections instead of hiding behind the screen and doing them that way. This is, I would say, one of the biggest reasons why I love to meet my actual subscribers because there's nothing like actually meeting somebody as opposed to just, you know, a comment here or there on online and hearing somebody say that this has changed their life in some way or something I just I really value the actual interaction and you know I've made friends long lasting friends from my subscribers that I've taken the time to meet and I think that that has made the biggest difference in their life but also in mine to take that time for one another. So of course I can't do that with everyone, but all I'm saying is that there's something of more value to actually have those kind of relationships with one another. This article really puts a lot into the hands of the parents and the decisions that we are making that are going to either help steer our children away from these things that can actually lead to more depression within their lives because there are a host of other things that can lead to depression as well. But this is mainly talking about the way that we interact with one another and the the ability that we have as parents to say, no, we're not going to allow you to do, to do this or yes, we can allow you to do this. And that's what I like because it, it just takes away all those excuses that you can hear so often people talk about. And the reason why those excuses are so prevalent is because it makes us feel better. It makes us feel better about our decisions and our choices. It says, we can boldly identify what works against them and get rid of them. This is talking about cell phones or even video games. 
It says, unfortunately, many parents are afraid to. We bow to the mantra that all kids have phones, spend too much time on social media, on video games, in their rooms, dabble in drinking and drugs, and and there's nothing we can do about it lest we make them feel like outcasts. These, my friends, are none other than excuses we concoct for ourselves so that we don't have to be the bad guys. I get it. My son and I had knocked down, drag out fight over video games when he was in high school. We wouldn't allow video games in the house. When he got to college, he thanked us. He saw too many friends spend hours in dark rooms playing video games for $45,000 a year. So what is this about? This video to me is mostly about putting into the parents' hands all of these decisions that we have and that we are responsible for making for our children. It's really hard. It's We are in some difficult times when it comes to something like this. We're in kind of like uncharted territory for our time, right? What are these video games gonna do to our kids later on down the road? What are these cell phones going to do? Because when I was younger, I didn't have them. And we're starting to see what's happening to our kids as they're getting older. And unfortunately, so many of them don't even get to be of age because of the things and the tragedy that happens because of these things. And because of the things that we are happily putting into our children's hands without so much as a thought about what this can end up doing to them in the long run. So one of the quotes in here said, show them how to connect with family genuinely. Listen to them laugh with them and play games. So it's an encouragement to us because it's something that we are having to learn as well. We are having to do all of these social media fasts and, and fast from our phones and things that we need to do to help us to see that we remember what life was like before, right? We remember what life was like before cell phones. I was so much happier. I have to say, I'm so much happier without all of that, but um, we remember what it's like, so it kind of makes us want to just step back from it a little bit more, but the problem is that those are children now that don't know any different. Maybe they you've put a, a cell phone in their hands since they were babies to entertain them. All these different things that we give them to entertain them. And then they don't know any different. They, they're constantly just their eyes connected to something else instead of actual people. I walk into homes sometimes, you know, wherever I go, and the younger generation doesn't even so much as look up to even greet the person coming into the door. And that's sad, you know, what kind of things are we teaching our children? How are we teaching them how to be and how to how to interact with other people. These are important things that I think that we all need to think about, that we even need to think about for ourselves. If we're going out to a restaurant with our significant other or with a friend, are we telling them that you're, you are so important to me that I'm going to give you my undivided attention? I'm not going to sit here and look at my phone. I'm not going to sit at the dinner table and look at my phone and pull it out. And you know, I get that sometimes there are occasions where we would if there was something that we actually wanted to show somebody, but I do just ask myself these questions often when I am in the presence of other people. Is, is this something that's kind of taking away from the interaction that we're having? Is this something that would make them feel like their time isn't valuable to me or that they aren't valuable to me? So these are just some things that I wanted to bring up and talk about because this is something that we're getting into now with our own family and um, I'm still all for no cell phones, okay? My husband feels differently. Let me know, too, if this is something that you and your spouse are divided about. What are the pros? What are the cons to you? And is this something that maybe you have decided, you know, after a little while of giving your kids some cell phones, decided that, you know what, this isn't for us, this isn't how I want my kids to be, and then you actually took the cell phones away, and you saw a really great um, 
change in your kids. I know that when I take things away, when it comes to cell phones, video games, anything like that, any device, even just the computers and things like that, um, maybe they're on restriction or something, I see a really big improvement. So please let me know in the comments below. This is just to open up the discussion on something that has been weighing heavily on me, and so I'm sure it's weighing heavily on many of you. And it was written by Meg Meeker. So yes, I'm going to link this in the description box below. Thank you so much for being here with me. Thank you for adding to the conversation, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye, everyone.